live from our seven Tasmania studios. Your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. Good evening everyone. An historic draft haul has made Tasmania the talk of the AFL world long before our team even arrives. Three players from the state's north finding clubs in the opening round. Colby McKercher getting it started early at pick two, the highest ever Tasmanian draftee. Everybody wants a slice of this trio after a big night in Melbourne. Three Launceston hopefuls left hoping no longer, handed their new Guernseys on one of Tasmania's most successful draft nights. With pick two, North Melbourne select. Colby McKercher from the Tasmania Devils and the Launceston Football Club. McKercher, the highest Tasmanian player to be drafted. Export Nick Rewald was drafted as top pick in 2000 from the Queensland system. Well, just all super grateful for the support system we have back home and yeah, so many great people that are proud um, football um, supporters and yeah, I'm just super proud to be um, repping the map there. Yeah. North Launceston bomber Riley Sanders called upon by the Western Bulldogs at pick six. It's just great to have a couple of your good mates, you know, realise their dreams and it's, yeah, it'd be pretty special to see them grow over the journey and hopefully play a few games against them and stuff, yeah. James Leake becoming a giant at pick 17. You know, James was, he's the bolter from the, from the group. He uh, wasn't in the Devils 12 months ago. He played uh, in the senior premiership in 2022 as a 16-year-old. Despite a photo shoot scheduled this morning, a good night's sleep wasn't a high priority. To bed about one o'clock or so, so I got, I got six hours, which is more than I thought I'd get. None of them admit to planning an allegiance switch when Tasmania enters the league in 2028. Uh, no, I don't reckon I'm pretty happy in these colours. Yeah. Experts are tipping a fourth Launceston draftee in Arnie Schoenmaker during tonight's second round. We're looking forward to, to seeing his name come out tonight, so hopefully we don't have to wait too long. More than a dozen other Tasmanians are in the running as well. Nick Kelly, 7 Tasmanian News. Two collisions between trains and vehicles occurred on Tasmanian roads last year, according to Tasrail. Releasing shocking footage today, they're calling for drivers to show more care, with 39 near misses at crossings around the state. The majority of the near misses were in the northwest, in particular at Devonport, Penguin and Sprayton. Metro has been forced to admit a safety error occurred while an external contractor was on site. A bus that had been worked by an unsupervised apprentice was allowed onto the road. Subsequently reviewed to, and no safety issues, but I note that is um, unacceptable that, that that happens. It happened as mechanics continued industrial action, their bargaining dispute dragging on. External contractors hired to try to undermine the existing workforce have been there for well over two months, for three months. Green bus trials are set to begin soon, with electric buses hitting northern roads next month. Newly released documents have shown some workers in our racing industry are without crucial workers' compensation cover, despite it being a licence requirement. The revelation raising fresh concerns about the safety of those in the industry. A light was shone on racing industry conditions in January, Fatigue striking at the end of a 20-hour workday. Two young workers injured and four horses killed. Working in racing can be a really dangerous job, whether you're training or whether you're um, actually on track. Trainers are required to have workers' compensation cover. Seven Tasmania News understands few, if any, do, with confusion over whether the Harness Racing Australia policy is enough. Documents released under Right to Information show TAS Racing's harness lead saying the Office of Racing Integrity haven't managed workers' comp for years, no longer requiring proof. An RE spokesperson said breaches are not within their regulatory purview. What's really clear is that there is no clarity and actually what we know is that every worker must be covered and safe at work. So this is a big problem that needs to be resolved right now. Two weeks after the crash, a police officer wrote to TAS Racing with concerns about conditions, saying while offences are normally dealt with by prosecution, it seems a better outcome to try to get an acknowledgement from the industry that the current practices are not safe and that crashes will occur in the future unless changes are made. The 20-year-old driver of the vehicle was later charged. Taz Racing says the matter was referred to police with no action required. It's not good enough for them to say they're not our employees because they are employees involved in the industry that Taz Racing has responsibility for. Taz Racing Chiefs will face a government business scrutiny hearing tomorrow with this crash, allegations of race fixing and animal welfare issues to feature heavily. 
Josh Duggan, 7 Tasmania News. WorkSafe Tasmania is investigating a lawnmower tragedy on the state's west coast that claimed the life of a council worker. The man, aged in his 30s, died at Frank Long Park in Zeehan when his ride-on mower lost balance on uneven ground, trapping him underneath. In a statement, West Coast Council expressed its shock, saying no one expects their loved ones not to come home from work. Mayor Shane Pitt also promising to provide every support necessary to those affected by the tragedy. A report will be prepared for the coroner. The actions of Tasmania police are being scrutinised following a dramatic boat chase on the Tamar River yesterday. Professional standards will review the use of force, including the use of pepper spray, as part of efforts to detain a man who allegedly stole the vessel. Police say specialist resources and negotiators were deployed due to concerns for his welfare and the public. The man was taken to hospital after his arrest and police say the review is standard practice. Tasmania's peak nursing union is calling on the state government to delay implementing a new ambulance offloading policy designed to reduce ramping. The ANMF says a major review of the state's emergency department should be completed before any new policy is implemented. It is not where paramedics and ambulances should be tied up in emergency departments. But similarly, we also don't want to just see transferring of the risk uh, onto our staff. A Department of Health spokesperson says it's in the process of drafting the new protocols and will soon commence staff consultation seeking feedback on potential impacts. For the first time in more than a decade, a new airline has touched down on Tasmanian soil, bringing its first plane load of passengers. Bonza has embarked on its history-making journey, promising to shake up the competition. A touchdown for the ages. Bonza is officially here, marking the first new boarding call for Destination Tasmania since 2007. It's a very, very proud moment. This is great for the people of Launceston and northern Tasmania, half of the population of the state. Baza is the first member of the airline's fleet to test the Launceston runway, loaded up with a full flight of passengers making the maiden journey from the Gold Coast. It was great, really good, very, seats very comfortable, good leg room, I was very impressed. The purple and white party is promising to shake up the arrivals hall, directly connecting Launceston to the Gold Coast three times a week, all year round. Way easier and it's like, it's a great opportunity. So much of a game changer, like it's unbelievable, like to fly direct. That's a million people of opportunity, a million people who can connect with friends and family more easily. Hailing the landing as a big boost for the tourism sector. Queensland is such an important tourism destination for Tasmania. It's actually our third biggest destination. Building that capacity for our visitation areas, our businesses, our tourism. Today's touchdown marks the latest addition to Bonda's growing destination map, with Launceston seen as the perfect gateway for tourists looking for a Tassie adventure. Right into the heart of Tasmania, where they can really see the north, but also travel right around the state. The newest feature on the tarmac off to a flying start. Victoria Easto, 7 Tasmania News. Launceston's Royal Park skate facility is slated for major upgrades and the City Council is seeking the community's feedback. It's opening up an online survey calling on all types of users to help shape the future of the park. Finding that really utilised facility that can actually, you know, inspire people to, to take it up recreationally, professionally or however they want to use it. It's not just for skateboarders obviously, it's for, for BMX riders, inline skaters, um, a, lot of, a lot of kids on scooters use this site, so we've really got to factor that in and, and make it a really good usable space. The consultation period ends on January 5. Tasmania's AFL inclusion and wheelchair premiers are still on a high after their recent success on the national stage. Today, they were honoured during a ceremony at Government House with hopes they'll inspire more Tasmanians to pick up a ball. Clutching on to their winning haul, the Tasmania Devils wheelchair and inclusion AFL teams now have even more to show for their golden premiership wins, receiving certificates from the Governor herself. 
after the game, I actually said to the players, I felt like I'd gained 16 sons. And it was like a proud dad moment standing there watching all the certificates being presented. Eight weeks ago, Darren's team made history, clinching the state's first Division I title in the National Inclusion Carnival, defeating reigning champion South Australia by just four points. It's just a fairy tale story, mate, when Hayden Britton kicked that goal. I've watched the replay more than 100 times, I reckon, and it still hasn't sunk in. Tasmania also topping the charts in Division Two of the National Wheelchair Championships, despite challenges faced along the way. Training was really difficult for us, um, being that we had a composite team with some Victorian players as well, uh, and we're spread out all over Tasmania, so it was really tricky to get together in one place. Their wins doing wonders for participation. It's just uh, taking off, basically. Um, we've now got uh, competitions across the, the country, um, and hopefully here in Tasmania we can do the same. The sports rise in popularity means new players are always welcome. Anyone hoping to help Tasmania defend its titles next year is encouraged to play ball. Brianna Boylan, 7 Tasmania News. A Tasmanian company is getting back on its feet following the recent actors' strike in Hollywood. Ignite Digi makes camera equipment and accessories which have been used on film sets across the world, including for the Marvel movies and local productions like Bay of Fires. These new productions coming down and, and you know trying to get them happening each year is, is really important for the industry as a whole and I, th I think that helps us being down here. It's a really good example of Tasmanian innovation and how here in Tasmania we can produce niche products, quality products that the planet wants. The company received three manufacturing grants from the state government. The program has since closed after four rounds. Following decades of backlash, it's hoped a revised plan for a foreshore walkway will be given the green light. The new and improved design of the Battery Point path addresses some big concerns, but there's still a lengthy process to get through. The community debate over 10 years in the making, a walkway connecting Battery Point to Hobart. The missing link in all of this is this section. This section will connect Maryville Esplanade to Castro Esplanade. The 2015 design was met with major controversy. Some residents concerned about privacy, the visual impact to the shore and water access, meaning it was back to the drawing board for these project advocates. And, and so we're talking about a much more um, lightweight, I think very attractive design, the kind of thing that you'd find in a national parks, for instance. The new concept is a three metre wide path hugging the shoreline made from glass reinforced plastic. The concept was pitched to Hobart Council just last night who had previously indicated its support for a similar structure. So we're waiting for advice back from our staff either late this year or early next year which will consider this resident design uh, and also uh, a peer review of it and also considering some other issues. Jim Gandy, who's behind other popular walkway designs, backs his creation, which he says addresses environmental concerns for the spotted handfish who call the area home. As long as there's a sensible management plan about uh, um, chemical, not having chemicals and stuff and uh, doing it the right time of the year, there shouldn't be any issues with that. If successful, the path could be a safer route for cyclists and walkers headed to and from the city and encourage tourists and locals off our busy roads. The group confident this plan won't take the next decade to get up and running. It's for people of all ages, all abilities and uh, I just think it's going to be hugely, hugely popular. If given the green light, a community consultation will take place for anyone opposing the plans. Ruby Cairns, 7 Tasmania News. The Hurricanes Big Bash roster is now complete. Liam Guthrie, the final signature, lured from the Brisbane Heat to add some bowling firepower. In six T20 matches, he's taken six wickets. The reigning Hobart international champion is returning to defend her title. The USA's Lauren Davis confirming today she'll be back in January. Davis has been battling niggles since her straight sets final win. I've been really trying to get my body right this, this preseason and um, hopefully I can start off on a strong, strong note again in Australia and then kind of that just sets, sets the precedent for, for a really great 2024. The tournament is pitching itself as a warm-up to the Australian Open to try and attract big names. Everything is chaotic in Melbourne when you've got 
750 odd players um, on site competing for all the practice courts, all the spaces. So Hobart's a little bit of calm before the storm. We're told to expect more announcements over coming weeks. Good evening, Hobart and Devonport recorded 20 today. Launceston, Fingal, Bushy Park and Ooze all on our high of 25. Burnie registered 21. Above average, the story of the day today. Grove and Smithton 23, St Helens and Friendly Beaches 22, Low Head and Flinders Island 21, Strawn 18. Now onto the cloud chart, just an isolated shower over the Midlands today. Verwood registered 2 millimetres. Everyone knows Verwood, of course, it's uh, not far from Goldsmith and Auburn. A high cloud moved over us too from the northwest to join a little lower cloud over the eastern central parts. Plenty of thunderstorm activity over eastern Victoria, New South Wales and most of northeast Queensland and the Territory. Tomorrow that high is still creeping our way, sitting south of all the inclement action with lows and troughs to the north. South to southwest winds picking up to 25 knots over southern waters. Variable winds over the north tomorrow. Forecast, partly cloudy in Hobart, 21, 22 the top for Geefton, bit of cloud for Bothwell but fine, 6 overnight, 23 the maximum. Launceston 24, Devonport 20, Cressy 24, all fine. Partly cloudy though, cloudy for Burnie and 19, 18 the top for Strawn, Curry a cool one, 17 degrees. For St Helens, 19 the top, bit of cloud over Swansea and Orford, expecting 20 degrees. Thursday, mainly fine with southeast to southwesterly winds and afternoon sea breezes. Another mainly fine day on Friday as the lack of rain continues. However, that is set to change on Saturday as showers extend statewide uh, later in the day, maybe a storm for the north and east. Further north, a sunny 39 in Perth tomorrow, fine but more bearable, bearable in Adelaide. Melbourne, cloudy and 20, 25 the top in Sydney, a shower and 26 in Brisbane, a stormy day over Darwin. 15 right now in Hobart, fine and 21 in Launceston, sunny in Devonport and 18. Got to say, Kim, that was a very enjoyable draft last night, but then again, I enjoy a draft most nights. Oh dear, it was. You can have another one tonight and watch one too. And that is all your news for now. I'll be back later with updates. Thanks for joining us. Good night.